After a hiccup in Brisbane, the world champions made a change at fullback for Hamilton. And inside of 10 minutes, the introduction of Francois Stein was paying prodigious dividends. Away she goes and just under. Now it's oh. over. His 60 metre effort followed soon after by a 57 metre one that sailed easily clear of the bar. The other stain, Mornay, then left his mark with a trademark drop goal. All too easy. A rare mistake by Dan Carter at the restart was probably a sign things weren't going to go the All Blacks way. Then a dose of those all too familiar line out wobbles, possession gifted to the box. And seconds later, the master sniper. Three de Prea over South Africa out to a 16 6 lead. Stain then nailed a third penalty from his own side of halfway, outstanding. But while Carter kept chipping away at the other end with four penalties, the All Blacks' muddling and indecisive play played right into the hands of an organised and physically dominant Bok outfit. And it wasn't released. Springboks, it was far too slow. Springboks had all the time in the world. Heading into the shed, the box up 22 12. And despite the drama that would unfold, a reality check shows the game was well done and dusted ten minutes into the second half. Under the bar he goes! OK, here's that drama. The injection of Isaiah Toyava perhaps proving the special project is definitely worth persisting with. Toyava all class setting up Sidavini Sivavatu. Then with just 90 seconds remaining, Richie McCaw latched onto one in the deep give the All Blacks a faint, if slightly fortuitous, crack at victory. And with time up, the impossible seemed well possible, as Carter again hoisted it high and wide, this time though too far. South Africa, the deserving winners, 32 points to 29. So the All Blacks left to ponder a Tri-Nations that can only end at best with a 50% win record, and that means still beating the Aussies next weekend, 2009. Clearly the year of the world champion box after another clinical performance. Wrapping up the post-match, here's Jim Kayes. This time it's theirs. A different test, but the same old story. A dreadful line-out, poor hands, and a patchy performance costing the All Blacks a winnable match. We played well in the last 20 and didn't play well enough in the first 60, to be frank. Turned over too many, too much ball, didn't we? Didn't have a structure up front um, at set piece for a lot, of the, a lot of the time in the first half. And when we did look likely, we turned the ball over in the tackles. And when they could win a line-out, the mistakes kicked in with the dual 5-8s roll a failure. I thought Daniel lacked a wee bit of giving the side direction when we had both of them on the field. And just with one of them, I think that improved that. Penalties hurt the All Blacks, though some simply can't be planned for. You know, he's not, not a goal kicker, he's a rocket launcher. Yes, it is a bit frustrating, isn't it? He just can't afford to, um, to infringe. It was a great kicking performance you know, by the, their two guys. You know, it just makes it tough you know, when you're giving away penalties and you know, they're slotting them over. But it wasn't long-range scud missiles that cost the All Blacks this test. It was their set-piece and basic skills. I imagine what we could do if uh, you know, we started right from the world go. And, um, you've got to take your head off to the to South African team. You know, they've been us three times this year and they're a, a good team. This third loss handed the silverware to the Springboks and gave their wacky coach the last laugh on what to do in Hamilton. Oh, you know, yeah, we did find something in Hamilton. We got the Tri Nations Cup in Hamilton. And now the All Blacks have to beat the Wallabies in Wellington on Saturday to avoid the wooden spoon. Jim Kay's Three News.